Good morning, Argoid. Mr. Southgate here from Southgate HQ in Chester. I hope this message finds you safe and well. Um, I've been asked to do an assembly for you today on VE Day. Before I explain what VE Day was, I'm going to talk a bit about the background of World War II. In 1939, the map of Europe looked like this. Now, after the First World War, which lasted from 1914 to 1918, lots of people just wanted peace. But unfortunately, some didn't. They didn't like the new Europe or peace, and they wanted another war. During the 1930s, Adolf Hitler was elected to be in charge of Germany. He wanted Germany to be the most powerful country in Europe, and he started to plan for a war, including having big military parades to show how strong Germany was. From 1933 onwards, Hitler invaded country after country, and our response was to appease him. We let him get away with it. Until, at the start of September 1939, Germany invaded the country of Poland. And at this point, we said enough's enough and declared war on Germany. Britain and France were both allies, friends of Poland, and had promised to help protect it. All three countries, in fact, had promised to help protect each other, so therefore Britain and France both declared war on Germany at this point, but it was too late to save Poland, and Germany took over half of the country. Britain got ready for war, and lots of children were evacuated to the countryside, in case Nazi Germany attacked, just as it had in Poland. British troops were sent to France to help there. Now all men in Britain aged 1840 to 41 had to join the forces unless they were in special jobs like miners and doctors. In April 1940, Germany attacked most of the countries in Western Europe. This included countries that were neutral. That means they had agreed not to be part of the war. None of the countries were able to stop the German air force and its army. The British troops in France had to try and get back to Britain very quickly and they were rescued by the Royal Navy and lots of small British fishing boats in something called the Dunkirk evacuation. Britain also brought some of the French forces with them and they would stay in Britain ready to fight in the future. In July 1940, Nazi Germany planned to attack Britain. Men and women of the Royal Air Force had to stop the invasion. It was called the Battle of Britain. As well as pilots from Britain, lots of pilots from other European countries who had been beaten by Germany got to Britain to help fight in the air battle. The Battle of Britain started on the 10th of July 1940 and didn't finish until September 1940. Hundreds of people were killed, but the RAF managed to stop the Germans from being able to invade Britain. Germany now began to bomb British cities and towns. This was called the Blitz, to try and make people give up. As a result, life in Britain became very hard. Children were often sent to live away, and food and clothes were all rationed. That meant you were only allowed to have certain things, and only a certain amount. Even sweets were rationed. Meanwhile, the German invasions continued. In the summer of 1941, Nazi Germany attacked the Soviet Union. And in December 1941, Japan, an ally of Germany, attacked the United States of America. Over the next few years, the fighting would take place all over the world, on land and sea. Many people were killed and injured. At home in Britain, lots of people were involved with war work. This included working in ammunition factories, joining the land army so that people could eat, and agreeing to restrictions on what they could and couldn't do. British towns and cities were still being bombed. This is a picture of Coventry Cathedral after it had been hit by a bomb. Perhaps the biggest turning point in the war came in 1944. The Allies were able to attack Italy and then land an invasion into France, known as D-Day, to defeat the Germans there and to start to liberate the people in those countries. The D-Day invasion was the largest amphibious invasion in history. Britain, the United States, Canada and France led the attack and they were supported by troops from all over the world, especially free Polish troops and those from other occupied countries. The Allied troops continued to fight the German forces across Europe from the east and the west. The Allied leaders met at a place called Yalta and agreed to ensure that the countries of Europe freed from Germany could be free and hold elections. 
they also agreed that they had to totally defeat Germany and occupy it. By April, the Allied forces were fighting in Germany itself. The German leader Adolf Hitler refused to give in and decided to kill himself. Eventually, the German generals agreed to surrender and to stop the fighting. The next day, it was announced that the war in Europe was over. The 8th of May, 1945, became VE Day, Victory in Europe. Here are some pictures of the VE Day celebrations. As you can see from the VE Day picture celebrations, a lot of street parties happened. Not everything changed as a result of VE Day. Rationing would still continue into the 50s. Men would still have to serve in the forces. Restrictions would still be in place. But no one needed to worry about fighting or being bombed in Europe anymore. It'd be another three months until the war finished totally when Japan surrendered. Now please take a minute today to think about those sacrifices during the Second World War that people made. And perhaps in the light of what we're going through ourselves right now, it gives us more clarity on what people went through at that time as well. I hope that you all stay safe and well and that we get back to school very soon because I am sure that you are missing your history lessons. Try to spend your time in isolation as productively as you can. Keep doing your schoolwork, learn something new every day. And if you get a chance, watch some of the documentaries that will no doubt be on TV today about VE Day. Anyway, that's me, Mr Southgate, signing off for now. Goodbye and stay safe.